My Hero Academia Season 6, Episode 14. First episode after that insane arc. I read the Safety Commission's post-mortem report. Oh, no, I can't even Im imagine. Damn, what a shot. Only then did I get a full picture of everything that went down that day. That is sh a shocking image. I don't know why that cut so deeply into my soul. That was one of the most heartbreaking openings. First 10 seconds of any My Hero Academia episode. Thinking about it from the, the world's perspective, though, there's a split between what we know and what they know. You know, we see Deku and the kids coming up. From society's perspective, there's just nobody at this point. The heroes might feel the same way for that matter, probably blaming themselves. What do you even believe in at this point? Just before the huge villain arrest operation began, the chairwoman invited a key figure involved in the Deka incident to their headquarters for an exploratory business meeting. Flashing back a little bit. A few spies, some back doors in our software, we'll uncover their every secret, including the identity of the clandestine agent the commission has had under their wings since childhood. Hawks, not gonna lie, I kind of counted him out, but he's been busy. New sad opening <laughs> so far. Fitting. Oh, there we go. There's a little hope. A little hope in there. Deku in just total tatters. Looks like he's gone back a little bit to his original costume. I'm expecting Uraka to play a bigger role going forward. Don't know who that is. Oh no. <laughs> I'm getting some sad vibes from this. Deku just fully embracing his Spider-Man abilities. Not even trying to hide it. What the hell was that? What in the world? Shigaraki freeing his child self. Deku reaching out a hand. Oof. I don't want to read too much in openings, but just given what's come before and what my hopes are for the, the story, that was incredible. And I see Mineta in there, so we're on track. <laughs> Mineta's shining moment is like the last thing I've been waiting for, besides Shigaraki Redemption. I apologize for making you wait. Please, think nothing of it. And committee meetings. As for the proposal, there are some line items I'd like to discuss. Hellish hell is a setup. Oh damn. With the death of the chairwoman, the hero's public safety commission was thrown into disarray. While chaos unfolded, the raid operation went ahead as planned. Right, everything went according to plan that day. Okay, okay, this is gonna be a flashback episode, isn't it? I might skip ahead a little bit in the video. Even doing a summary, they're probably not gonna be able to capture it all. There's so much happened. I believe in you. All do. Whatever you did was justified. So don't you die! I'm really interested to see how that turns out for him. You won't hurt them! This is here! And seeing this all again, one of the things that's so amazing about first half of season six is that as good as it was in the beginning and as much as I enjoyed it, it just took on a whole new level of thrill in the second half. It just got better and better. Like every episode outdid itself. Yeah, there's so much, so many events, so many moments, they can only show flashes. That's when Dobby, a member of the League of Villains, revealed that he was in fact Endeavor's son in a message broadcast across the country. His recording included video of Hawks killing Bubaigawara. One thing I'm still wondering about that is if Dobby purposely stood back and let that happen. Sorry, I'm yes, and then Best Genius arrived. And Hope returned for the first time. As of this moment, and even that was overshadowed somewhat, or matched by... This, this moment, <laughs> which legit made me cry. What a mix of emotions. Full range of despair and hope. Shigaraki still slipped through our fingers, escaping with seven Nomu. All right, well, I think that's probably the end of the summary. I'm just a broken record at this point, but it was so great. At first I was thinking, what could possibly follow that? Because there's so many moments that have such a complex web of backstory and development, interwoven fibers that make it some of the most compelling stuff I've ever seen. But I think there is an answer, and I think the answer is, since that was so action-packed, now would be a really great time for some deep character dives. And there's a lot to work with because in a show about heroism, this is their biggest test. It's different for me as a viewer because I just love them and I have total faith in the kids, but they don't have that same luxury, you know, this is their lives. And for the duration of the show, they've had all of Hero Society to lean on, creating a buffer between them and just total chaos in the abyss, but that is now gone, completely gone. I think the opening shot of this episode was so perfect. All Might is not here. The character's greatest strength, and I think the, the real backbone of why I admire them so much, is their ability to self-generate inspiration. But in a sense, while they're all as powerful as they've ever been, they have less than they've ever had. The few heroes that are left alive are in terrible shape. Having let Shigaraki escape, the threat is now going to come back bigger than it was. There's no clear heroic symbol or leader. And for Deku, there's a chance he'll he's going to be at odds with some of his fellow heroes just because of his bizarre but great instinct that Shigaraki wants to be be saved. Every hero at the scene explicitly said that no work study students participated in the fight against Shigaraki. Our part was erased from the record. Why? That denial is the only reference to me, Kachan, and Todoroki in the entire document. 
whoa, they're burying their heroism. That's a bizarre move in a moment like this. Are they just like thinking about the politics of it rather than what actually happened? I clearly remember the first wielder's defiance and Shigaraki's face. Yeah, this was this was such a big moment like for me. This was so huge. Rescued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going there. It looks like we're really going there. This is chilling. It's done so well for a flashback. It's, it's great. It's gripping. <laughs> also, on the topic of shaving Shigaraki, I think it's critical that All for One is actually at odds with Shigaraki. All for One's victory comes at the cost of Shigaraki's soul and probably life. I think it's significant that, in a sense, saving Shigaraki probably also means defeating All for One. I think the show has reestablished clearly that All for One is the real evil here. And it's also very possible that All for One and Shigaraki's conflict will be their undoing compared to the unity on the other side, the unity between Deku and friends as well as him and the previous owners, wielders of One For All. Garaki Kudai was arrested for aiding and abetting murder, mutilating corpses, illegal quirk use, embezzling hospital funds. <laughs> One of those things is not like the other in terms of severity, but okay. Yeah, it's the Helicopters biggest crime, embezzlement. Him from the field. Oh, they captured Gigantomachia. Mr. Compress, captured. He was gravely injured and okay, so he didn't die. rushed to the hospital. But where the hell do you even keep Gigantomachia? have not stopped our liberation hear me yeah, that's, no we that's have only true. just begun to rock oh, what the heck a thousand sheep pierce I can imagine some heroes sort of losing it here a little bit ethics going out the window thinking about it more now this could even split hero society in terms of ideology in terms of what is allowed what is necessary having just seen the aftermath get him paranormal liberation front lieutenant captured Koku Hanabata Paranormal Liberation Front Lieutenant and leader of the Hearts and Mind Party. Captured. These are all victories, but it's kind of like, compared to the fact that Shigaraki's still out there, it's so what, you know? It just feels like so much small fry. The heroes even ended up arresting some of their own as well. Right, Those right. sympathized with the villains. It's going to be absolute chaos for a long time. Even if all the heroes were on the same page, it would take forever to sort out what happened and what went wrong. But I suspect not all of them will be on the same page. And it already seems like there's some politicking happening. However... The aftermath of the mission was devastating. Was that the, the fan, the kid with the Endeavor doll? Did he die? Is that a subtle hint? Don't forget to smile, everyone. Smile on your face has just gone out the window. Mika, stop! You're making it hurt worse. You have to get out of here. Oh no. I don't care, buddy. Someone's gonna show up. They're not gonna let this happen on the show. No way. No way. Who's it gonna be? Thank you, Uraka. <laughs> and Sue. His leg might be broken. We need a doctor to I mean, given the size of that concrete slab, he got off real easy. I was sure he, his lower half was gone. I have to go beyond. There's an elderly couple huddled together on the rooftop. This day just never ends. This one's not responding. I am on the ground for now, but I can't save everyone. Prioritize treatable patients. This is suddenly feeling like a war movie. I give up. I can't do this. It's just too much. Yeah, it's not what we're used to, but it's understandable that it would just break a lot of people. I quit. I don't want to be a hero anymore. It's not what we need right now, but sympathy for, for him. It's midnight, please! You can't be gone! Someone say this isn't happening! Stop joking and open your eyes! This isn't funny! Get up and tell us what to do! Can you hear me? No. This can't possibly be happening, right? Guys... The electric shock, which was so weak that the hero x likely didn't even feel it, isn't what brought him back. Shigaraki was revived. By his dreams and hatred. Yeah, that was my reading of it at the time as well. Can you believe what all the headlines are saying? If they're true, what happens next? I never trusted that guy, even when he was still number two. His one job is to protect us. Did he forget that? He better explain himself and fast. It might be safer abroad. And the civilian society never fails to disappoint with their tastes. Poor fools. They like to think tomorrow will bring them hope. He's got a lot of control. But I'm not giving the world time to recover. It's They're not going to like now. this. Shigaraki's colleagues are not... This is not what they want. This is not who they like. This is a really interesting test for them. What is... Free my real body. What is their real allegiance? Is it to each other and to Shigaraki? Or is it to villainy? I suspect, based on a lot of stuff we've seen, that's not going to go over well 
they're not gonna want to be in league with all for one maybe at first but there's just too much backstory and build up there wow really flash it back and that hurts extra bad right now in this ending better days oh my god the festival do you remember that i had no idea <laughs> i had no idea what was coming yeah it's insane. I'm, a, I'm speechless, honestly. Welcome to your first year of high school, everyone. I'm not here for All Might's statue thing. It's so brilliant, it's so genius. And I love that shot in the ending of Deku standing in front of it because I have such a range of emotions. On one hand, my first instinct is to think about how sad it is to see how far that image of All, All Might and the safety it brought people has fallen and the absolute chaos that exists in society right now and what it must mean for Deku and other people who love All Might, like Bakugo, to watch that in real time. On the other hand, part of me is looking at Deku and is thinking, yeah, take a good look. It's a bitter pill, but it's also a dose of truth. This is the way things are right now and it's up to them. And I think I've been saying this for a while. I can't remember starting when, but at least a couple seasons. There are a couple things left for Deku. Obviously his power development, him getting stronger, him rising in status, finishing his first year of high school. But philosophically, one thing that's always been missing is he has had the luxury of being strong and being good while being attached to and being beholden to a set of pre-established rules and the existing structure of society. And that's lucky, right? That's great for him. But there's a part of that that also I think contains a danger and has some element of ignorance in it. It's ignorance he can afford, you know, because things have been great. Here society has been great. It's been all my it's been people who we've seen who've proven themselves in this arc to actually be really aligned with the good. What happens when that's not the case? You know, what happens when hero society is not actually doing what Deku feels is right? I think in order for one's values to be fully refined, they can't be attached unconditionally to any group or any structure. The danger there is, you know, you might attach yourself to something when it's good, but institutions and groups are never going to be universally good and also they shift over time. So if you get stuck with the identity of I am X, then you're bound and trapped to follow X into whatever hell it morphs into if that happens. So I think there's a level higher than that for Deku to go where it's him seeing clearly what his own values are and then sticking to those and living by them no, no matter what the tides bring. And I'm seeing elements of that. The hints are, besides the opening and Deku looking tattered and going back to his roots kind of and looking very solo, the fact that there still seems to be a little bit of attachment to protocol and image over truth among the hero organization. The huge fact that Deku seems to want to save Shigaraki's soul, which I don't think he's going to get a lot of support from that aside from a couple of his friends probably. The possibility of certain heroes giving up like we just saw, or worse I would say, the possibility of some of them deciding they can dispense with values in favor of results having just been decimated by Shigaraki and the villain, villain squad. That would be a pretty easy line to cross. I wouldn't even really blame anyone for that, even if I don't think it's the most heroic, because all right, we did it this way and look what happened to this city. Look how many casualties we experienced. Look how many innocent people died. Why are we playing by these rules? Why are we valuing any life? Why are we valuing the no-kill rule? for example. Why don't we start killing people who are suspected of villainy, that kind of thing. It's not that far of a descent into that. So I feel like for anybody with values, especially really top level, high values that put pragmatism not as the highest rung, it's going to be a difficult fight for Deku. And this is a defining moment, I think, for him. It's time to really find out who he is for himself. In a sense, it feels like his biggest challenge. And that's really exciting for me as someone who is one of the, the My Hero Academia fans that absolutely loves Deku. He's got a tall mountain to climb. He's going to have to fight that battle and win. Maybe Uraka will be the one. Maybe it's time for Uraka to shine in a role standing beside Deku.